was reaffirmed at the Beijing Conference of 1995 and various international and regional agreements since then, as well as in many national laws. They include the right to decide the number, the timing, as well as the spacing of children, the right to voluntarily marry and establish a family, and of course the right to the highest attainable standard of health, among others. Fellow Gambians, 18 years after the ICPD program of action was adopted for the provision of universal education and for ensuring universal health care, including family planning, assisted childbirth and prevention of sexually transmitted diseases, among others, there is still a significant gap between sexual and reproductive health needs among young people, in particular in Africa, and the education and services provided to them. Researchers estimate that universal access to family planning could save the lives of about 175 women each year, increasing birth intervals to at least 36 months, which could also prevent the death of 1.8 million children under five globally, making access to it indeed more critical than ever before. We also know that what it takes to save women's lives Universal access to contraception, for example, to avoid unintended pregnancies is key. So is access to skilled care during delivery, which means qualified nurses, among others, and midwives, and rapid access to quality emergency obstetric care when needed. It is important. In a UNFPA publication on World Population Day, it is also reported that one in three of all deaths related to pregnancy and childbirth could be avoided only if women who wanted effective contraception has had access to them. Fellow Gambians, the Gambia government, under the good leadership of His Excellency the President, Chief Professor Al Haji Dr. A.J.J. Jami, has recognized the right to access to quality maternal and child care. In reaffirming government's commitment, particularly to reducing maternal and child deaths in the Gambia, the emergency or the emergence, rather, of the Second Republic also saw the coming of many health facilities, both major as well as minor, which are spread nationwide. And in addition to this, of course, is the widespread of nature of primary health care facilities countrywide, which also shows government's commitment to providing health care to the citizenry, with reproductive health not being an exception. Also, His Excellency the President in 2007 made the provision of maternal care particularly in our public health outlets, free for all Gambians, especially mothers and their infants. To this end, the Gambia government continues to reaffirm our political and financial commitment in supporting health and creating an equal opportunity for all Gambians in having access, particularly to reliable and affordable health care and guaranteeing dignity and freedom for all. Furthermore, in the Gambia, access to reproductive health services include family planning, and of course, including family planning, therefore, is recognized and given attention. Knowledge on modern contraception has increased from 76% to 90%, according to contraceptives maternal, infant, and neonatal study of 2001. Similarly, maternal mortality has declined from 1,050 per 100,000 in 1990 to 730 per 100,000, according to the 2003 population and housing census. Also is the provision of free contraceptives in all health facilities. Building and sustaining on all these gains, therefore, we need to have efforts to prevent maternal deaths and ensure access to voluntary family planning. And it also requires commitment from a broad range of partners, men as well as women, international organizations as well as governments, civil society, and indeed the media. The recent multi-indicator cluster study, 2010-2011, conducted in the country has shown that the single most critical intervention for safe motherhood is to ensure that a competent health worker, with mif particularly those with skills, midwifery skills, are present at every birth, and transportation is available to a referral facility for obstetric care in case of emergency. Maternal mortality rate has declined, as I said earlier, from 1,050 per 100,000 live births in 1990 to 730 per 100,000 live births in 2001. The total fertility rate as well, which shows that the average number of children per woman has declined from 92 per thousand in 1993 to 
to 75 percent in 2003. This placed the Gambia, of course, in a strong footing, particularly in her quest to meet the target of MDGs 4 and 5. Fellow Gambians, despite the gains, however, registered, uh, there should be no room for complacency at all, as we are confronted with challenges which are worth mentioning. There are continents, for example, as I'm talking to you now, where women give birth, and it's a pleasant experience because they are bringing life. In our continent, women also bring death to themselves and their children, whilst giving life. Admits sometimes, when they give life, sometimes both of them pass away. That has been admitted by the AU Commissioner for Social Affairs, Beyonce B. Gawan. Maternal mortality in Africa remains the highest in the world despite the Conference on Population and Development, the ICPD 1994, and its program of action. Worldwide, as I'm talking to you also, more than 500,000 women die in childbirth or from complications during pregnancy each year. The majority of them are from Africa, where 19 out of the 20 countries with world's highest maternal mortality ratios are located. According to the AU Department of Social Welfare, if no actions are taken in the next 2.5, in the next decade, in fact, 2.5 million women in Africa will die during pregnancy and childbirth. In addition, maternal health, we are told also, is responsible for up to 4 million stillbirths and other 4 million newborn deaths annually. General causes of maternal deaths around the world include hemorrhage, that is bleeding during pregnancy and after delivery, Pregnancy-induced hypertension, infections, obstructive labor, and severe anemia, among others. All these causes are surely preventable with the availability of and prompt access to high-quality package of medical interventions, such as, as I said earlier, on emergency obstructive care services, among others. Unlike the medical causes, the three-delay model, which is delay in deciding to seek medical care influenced by, of course, by sociocultural factors. Delay in reaching a medical care facility for help, influenced by factors such as distribution of health facilities, availability of transportation and cost of transportation, and finally, of course, the delay in receiving prompt, adequate, and appropriate medical assistance after reaching a medical facility, mainly resulting from operational difficulties like shortage in medical supplies and equipment, inadequate skilled health personnel, and most importantly, on coordinated emergency services. These are all problems and concerns. Fellow Gambians, in the Gambia, the high mortality ratio can be attributed to, among other things, 